very kind introduction. Well, as I think you know now, I am Trudy Watt. I think the name has been mentioned once, it's been mentioned a lot. I'm obviously delighted to have been invited here this evening to talk about my relationship with ECF and our family fund, um, named after my father. So clearly I have to tell you about him, that build-up. My father inherited the tenancy of Heath Place Farm in Orsett from his father, who had himself emigrated from Fenwick in Ayrshire in 1889, together with his parents when he was just a boy of 14. Their journey south was a memorable trek uh, by railway with the dairy cattle, the pigs and the horses, uh, all the way to Grays Station. Yeah. <laughs> and then across, uh, through Grays and across the countryside to the farm. My father was born in 1950, uh, the youngest of three brothers, and educated locally and at Rittle Institute of Agriculture, before finally taking over the tenancy of the farm having married my mother, Molly Payne, uh, from Grays in 1937. He was fond of saying that she brought the added value of having worked for the Inland Revenue. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, she became an exceptionally valuable partner in our family farming business, whilst being chairman of the Thurrock branch of NSPCC, active in many other local charities, and also keeping an eye on me. During World War II, my father became a member of the Essex War Agricultural Advisory Committee and he was clearly a natural communicator and he was involved in all things related to farming and agriculture. For example, Vice President of the Royal Agricultural Benevolent Institution, a Fellow of the Royal Agricultural Society of England, a member of the BBC Agricultural Advisory Committee, the Guild of Agricultural Journalists and the Worshipful Company of Fruiterers, a governor, later honorary fellow of Rittle College, an executive member of the Rural Community Council <coughs> of Essex. I could add more, but I am just exhausted reading that selective <laughs> list. But as we've heard, he was very involved as well locally. He was 34 years as a Justice of the Peace and 21 years as honorary organizer of the Orsett Show. Also a deacon and treasurer of the Orsett Congregational Church, a member of Thurrock Rotary Club, founder president of Thurrock Natural History Society, and a founder chairman of Thurrock Marriage Guidance Council. <laughs> he spent 40 years as an agriculture bro broadcaster and journalist. His obituary written by Anthony Rosen, many of whose observations I'm including here, um, was, was quite something. I was really touched to learn from it that immediately before his first BBC broadcast in 1951, he went into All Souls Church, Round Place, and prayed that his words would not hurt anyone. My father was a fervent believer in the concept of the family farm as a unit providing a stable rural structure. But his belief was, was sorely tested when in 1964, his landlord invited him to take over the management of the Orsett Estates in hand land of 2,700 acres. Such was his success that the then Minister of Agriculture, Fred Peart, held the estate up as an example of the way that British agriculture should progress. My father loved a lively debate. At conferences, he was always the first one to ask a question and ready with a highly pertinent comment. He cared greatly about equality and fairness, and this was why he never participated in party politics. He was heavily influenced, as we heard, by many overseas agricultural visits, undertaken together with my mother and often with me. There were three visits to China in the 70s and 80s, and two to the Soviet Union, including one huge challenge of an 8,000 mile uh, journey. He gave numerous talks about these experiences and raised money for the RABI. So in 1973, he was appointed OBE for Services to Agriculture. As his daughter, I know that my father was a very special person. He, he cared first and foremost for people of whatever background, and he always insisted on equitable treatment on, on every subject. And this was one of the reasons why in 1992, my parents and I set up the Hugh Watt Family Charitable Trust to support charities in the area where we lived. 
But when my mother Molly died in 2002, and 16 months later my father died, I was still sharing the trust. But because I was living and working in Oxford, it was quite a challenge for me to give the fund the attention um, it needed. My solicitor, who was one of the trustees, suggested that we talk to BCF, who might be able to help us. I was perhaps a little sceptical at first, because I didn't want our family trust to lose its identity. I wanted it to continue in, in the way that we set it up and, and retain some involvement in where the money was spent. But to my relief, I, when I discussed my concerns with the Foundation, I discovered that they were as keen as I was to ensure the fund stayed true to its purposes <coughs> um, and that I could remain just as involved as I wanted to be. And the process of transferring the funds from the Trust to the fund in, within the Foundation was simple. We signed a fund agreement setting out <coughs> the parameters of the fund and transferred the money. That was in 2004. Since then, I've been on a journey with ECF and, and learned so much uh, about what is going on in the area where I was brought up. And although I haven't lived there for many years, it, it makes me feel very connected still with Thurrock. Caroline sends me information about the organisations in the Thurrock area, um, many of which I know, but some of which I've never heard of. Um, sometimes the grant requests are quite small and it's clear what's required. But occasionally, Caroline will come to me with a request for a larger sum for a particular project. And this happened last year, when she called me to say that Essex Wildlife Trust was building a new educational centre on reclaimed land at Mucky. It was part of a large and very exciting project to regenerate a landfill site for wildlife. They needed around £35,000 to fund an educational suite within the centre. But given our family's interest in environment and education, I knew this was something that we would all have wanted to support, and so I readily agreed to support the grant in full. What I didn't know at the time was that I would receive an invitation to the official opening by Sir David Attenborough last May. It, it was a wonderful occasion, made special for me by the fact that Sir David, in his opening speech, paid tribute to my father, with whom he had worked, when they were both council members of the Nature Conservancy Council. The Thurrock Thameside Nature Park is a <coughs> wonderful place, and my parents would both have been so proud and pleased that future generations of children will continue to learn about the area, its environment, and its wildlife. But this grant was one of a hundred grants, totaling some half a million pounds, which have been awarded from our fund since it came to the foundation. The organisations which have received grants range from a holiday play scheme for children, to a support group for visually impaired people, diversionary activities for teenagers, to debt counselling. And it's heartwarming for me to know that the family's legacy is supporting local organisations and people, and it will continue to do this way into the future. So I'm very much looking forward this evening um, to hearing from one of the organisations here tonight which has received a grant from our family fund. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak here this evening and enabling me to share with you how proud I am to be involved with the foundation. Thank you.